me to say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh comrades ladies and gentlemen we're here today in this square in support of a long suffering and a noble noble people the people of palestine i want to say a couple of things i've been asked to talk about the history of it the struggle of the people of palestine dates back to in the early 20th century one of the most significant events was the 1936 to 1939 uprising of the Palestinian people. They rose up against the British plan to give the land, their land, to the Zionists. They struggled with a great general strike and they fought as hard as they could. Now the British did what the British have always done. They assassinated, they murdered, they slaughtered, they hung. They blew up homes, they blew up towns, they blew up cities, and they drove homeless people by the thousands away. The British also used Jewish irregulars in the Haganah and the Argun. And the British taught, taught the Haganah and they taught the Argun every single dirty, filthy tactic you use against the risen people. And the Israelis said they learnt everything they knew from the British. Now since the 39 revolt, the Israeli army has used those same tactics again and again and again against the people. Again and again they have blown up homes. Again and again they have assassinated, they have tortured, they have imprisoned, and they have driven our people into exile. They could not have done it without the help first of the British Empire, and they could not do it now, today, without the help of the American Empire. Without the Americans, without the American guns, without the American military support, Israel would not last 48 hours. We would see a liberated and free Jerusalem within three or four days without the Americans. In 1973, only the corrupt Egyptian government saved the Israeli army. Only the corrupt Egyptian government stopped the Arabs from entering Jerusalem. And when the Israeli army ran out of ammunition, President Nixon airlifted guns and weapons to Israelis. That's the sort of struggle we see. Now we all know about the official version of the setting up of Israel. Last year the Australian government, to its everlasting shame, celebrated the setting up of Israel. They told again the lies that the Israelis have spread everywhere. How the United Nations created a wonderful progressive country. And how the wonderfully progressive Israelis turned to the Arabs and said, please stay with us and help us build this country. They told the lies that the Arab governments forced the Palestinians to flee. We know the truth is absolutely different. We know that 1948, in Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion formed a plan called the Dalit Plan. And that plan was the final solution for the Palestinian people. The final solution. The Israelis and the Haganah planned to drive out the Palestinians, drive them all out. That's the truth of what they did. That's the truth of Israel. It was built on murder. It was built on slaughter. It was built on torture. It was built on imprisonment. And above all, it was built on ethnic cleansing. Now we are told in Israeli propaganda that their country is a light unto the nations. Well, it's no light unto any nation. It is a blight unto the nations. It is a disgrace to the world. It is one of the great running sores of our time. There will be no justice, there will be no peace in this world until Israel ceases to exist. And until a Palestine emerges once more, a secular Palestine, home to everyone. Now I want to say this much. No Jew has an enemy here. We are the enemies of Zionists. We are the opponents of Zionists. We are not anti-Semitic. Not one of us. Not one of us at all. And all the propaganda and all the lies that we are anti-Semites will not stop us gathering. 
will not stop us protesting, will not stop us supporting the brave Palestinian people. My friends, we're going to march tonight again. We're going to take to the streets of Brisbane. We're going to show the people of Brisbane that we care, that we really care about the people of Palestine. Earlier today in this square, thousands of people gathered, and I support them, to save the koalas. Whether the Israeli government had killed 1,400 koalas in Gaza, Brisbane would be here protesting. <laughs> but they didn't kill koalas. They only killed Arabs, women and children and old men. They slaughtered them. Now we know we've heard about the Goldstone Report. And I agree with what was said about that. But most important comment on the Goldstone Report came from his daughter. Professor Goldstone's daughter said this. The report would have been much worse if my daddy hadn't written it. And that report is censored by Goldstone. But even he admit that war crimes were committed. And those war crimes should end up at the Hague. And in the dock should be Bibi Netanyahu and Ehud Barak and the Omert and the other Zionist hoodlums. They should be put on trial. Okay, now friends, what we're seeing today is this. All over Europe, because of the economic crisis, the fascist movement has begun to reborn, be reborn. We're seeing the revival of Nazism in Europe. We're also seeing the revival of Nazism in America in the protest meetings. And everywhere where the Nazis gathered, the fascist filth gathered, what flag are they waving aloft? They're waving the Israeli flag because the Nazis recognize their own. The filth recognizes the filth. The Israeli fascists are recognized by European fascists. They're the same kind. They're the enemies of progress, the enemies of peace, and they're enemies above all of the decent Palestinian people. My friends, fascism is on the move. But we must not be afraid. Never fear. Because I want to say now, and this is the truth, and this will happen. And you will hear the words bear out, the, the ears will bear the truth of my words out. A firestorm is about to break out in what we call the Middle East. From Afghanistan right down to the Yemen, a firestorm. And the Americans will be driven out. And the filth and the scum that support the Americans will be driven out too. The kings of Saudi Arabia, the kings of Jordan, and above all in Egypt, that filthy the Barak family will be forced to flee. Yes. The tortures will be put to the right sword. The Egyptian revolution will happen. Cairo will be free. And the Arab people will begin the long march to Jerusalem. And they will liberate the holy city. And we will be with them all the way. The Palestinian people will say, we are with you in your struggle. Yours is a just fight. Yours is a good fight. Yours is the moral fight of our time. We support you all the way from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Thank you.